I was um, just back chatting with Elaine Haygood, who was kind enough to be the makeup consultant, uh, volunteer for the Chicago New Media Summit. She was putting some makeup on me because apparently I look like a man who sweats. And <laughs> makeup's not her full-time job. She has a production company, and she's an animator, and she's a writer, and she's a producer. And she says, you know, while she's making sure that I don't look like I sweat, and she's saying, you know, I don't get all this branding stuff. I'm blogging, and I'm running ads, and I've got banner things going, and I'm making calls, and it's just, it's very difficult. And I said, you know, I, I work with a lot of CMOs, big people who make, you know, half a million dollar bonuses, and they're all struggling for the same, with the same thing. This branding thing today has gotten very, very complicated. And um, I'll tell you why. I have a theory. I see a weird kind of war going on between technology and marketing. It's a quiet war. It's a friendly war. It's a happy war, even. It has sort of a, hey, how are you? Very nice shoes. Let's go to lunch. It's all working together kind of war. But it is a struggle. I see a struggle. And also, I have a plan for peace. So let me first admit um, a truth about myself before laying out my plan for peace. And my, my big admission is I am not a technologist. And there are a couple of people here in the audience who know me very well who are saying, damn right, you are not a technologist. But, but every day, more and more, I work with people who are technologists or who are drawn to this thing we're calling new media because of their passion for technology. And as they find that it is easier, and it is, as they find that it is easier to apply their work to marketing and even to lead marketing, I see a struggle with their ability to connect to a brand's big picture. I see them struggling with connecting to a brand's big picture. I see CMOs noticing this struggle to connect to a brand's big picture. And on the other side, I see all the traditionally big picture people are struggling from the other way, which is here is this media world, this audience connection world that is now so driven by technology, how do we incorporate it? How do we integrate it? How do we use it right? How do we not screw it up? And the truth is, both are just a little bit. So. My plan for peace is very simple, and it's called Branding 101. I know I'm like the last speaker, and we're just a few minutes from beer, uh, but I hope it's not too late to change the name of this event. We're all here for the Chicago New Media Summit, and we've heard all kinds of cool things. You know, John was telling me back there that we got like 15 minutes on NPR. This is a big success. And there's, there's lots of cool ideas being talked about and very specific things being shared. But I have a quibble with the word new in new media. In, in the ad business, we don't call it new media anymore, and we haven't for a while. And not just because the calendar tells us it's time to drop the word. You know, it's, it's uncool, it's lame. We drop the word because it's kind of dangerous. It is. It's just a word, but it's kind of dangerous. If something's new, we can make excuses for not understanding it. If something's new, we can shrug our shoulders when it's out of control and say, well, what are you going to do? You know, it's the, it's the Wild West out there. I can't control this stuff. <laughs> if something's new, we can feel OK about being bad at how we use it. Oh, God. That kind of sucked, but hey, first time. If something's new, maybe it gives us permission to ignore the old truths about human behavior and message consumption. And, and this is sort of an attitudinal thing. I've been, you know, in meetings where, you know, people have said, hey, you know, old guy, it works a little differently now. And I'm like, dude, don't, don't say that. <laughs> well, it's true that rich media 
and social media and RSS and SMS and widgets and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, operate by rules that are at least technically different from other older media. It's true that the old high-walled barriers to content creation have been knocked down. And while the reports of TV's death have been greatly exaggerated, there's no argument anymore that the internet is maturing in its role within society, and for many consumers, it is decidedly old hat. Four years ago, Howard Dean made headlines. The liberals have computers. We're doomed because he raised money through the internet. That was like amazing. That was like a revolution. Now, the candidates, if you noticed, were simply scored by how well they used the web. The fact that they would use the web, the fact that they must use the web, the fact that it was expected that they would have mastery over the web, I think are signs that at least for the internet, the word new has long passed its expiration date. And for those of us in the business of helping brands express themselves, it is critical that we dump the word new and start applying some of the old discipline. It's just media, and the people on the other side are just people. We used to say that television was like such a powerful branding tool, because you have moving pictures, and you have voice, and you have music, and the possibilities are just, they're endless. What did we know? I mean, my God, what's come about? The web and, and other two-way technologies can let us do things that are just beyond amazing. We've been talking about it for the last day and a half. But for branding, which is my little corner of the universe, that's both a promise and a pitfall. And I want to make the case that too many people at all levels in the branding process, from chief marketing officers to coders, get intoxicated by newness to the point that they ignore two simple and admittedly old ideas for success. Stick with something long enough to make it stick and stick with it at every point of consumer contact. It's like duh, hey, 101, and we forget it all the time. I worry about these two old ideas because these two rules were hard to follow before Al Gore invented the internet and before your cell phone could stream video direct from God. And it, it's like amazing. I still hear very senior people, you know, walk into my office and say, hey, you know, we couldn't really make uh, uh, the thing over here work with the thing over there, so we did something totally different over here, but it's really cool, right? And I'm like, are you high? <laughs> so throw new media in the mix and all the excuses and freedoms that, that come with the word new, not to mention the pure play companies you sometimes need to pull it off, and you get a whole new level of brand confusion and delusion and new ways to screw up the amazing opportunity that is in front of us, and it is amazing. So innovate? Absolutely. Surprise? You'd better. Better. But make sure that everything is adding up to the same thing. Don't create functionality for the sake of cool interactivity. I hear it all the time. Don't do that. That is, that is so old. Don't just create an ad or a site or an app. Get to the next level. Create a world. A brand world is what some people call the big idea or what Koch's brand experience chief calls transmedia storytelling, which I'm pretty sure is different from transgender storytelling, which is probably a, its own industry. Uh, but for me, the idea of a world is, is easier to understand and more useful in helping creative people who long to wander stay true to the point. Worlds are so big, they outlive campaigns. Worlds have a point of view that approaches the passion of a religion, Worlds become iconic, worlds take on a life of their own, and worlds obey their natural laws, as all worlds do, as our physical world does, no matter if the medium is old, new, or adolescent. A brand world is a culture, a nation state with a logo.
A beer becomes a place and then becomes a symbol for an emotion. And while other beers compete on things they can never really own, like a joke or a brewing formula, Corona is an icon for our unquenchable desire for escape and relaxation. Not me, by the way. This campaign is more than 12 years old, and I've spent half my career on it, and the other half fighting the part of me that begs to change it. Every week, got to change it. And as it became clear that to continue to reach our audience, we would have to reach them online and use other technologies, the temptation to do something totally new was tremendous. It was, it was incredible. It was like this giant magnet, because that's what new media demands, right? that we do something new. It's different and operates in whole new ways. There are new rules. Well, it is a different experience, for sure. And there are new rules of sorts. But the blocking and tackling of great branding is the same online as it is offline. And so the web experience for Corona leverages the medium but protects and even enlarges the corona world. So this is coronabeach.com. It looks just like a corona commercial. It sounds just like a corona commercial. Feels just like a Corona commercial. But it does something a Corona commercial would never really do. Every time I see something poignant, the waves come in. It does something a Corona commercial can never really do. It lets the audience, for the first time, sit in the Corona chair. There is a ton, by the way, a ton of new stuff technologically happening here. And there's someone in the audience that just broke her back making this thing happen. This is a bleeding edge, immersive video and flash bit at work here. It was very difficult to do, but because of the technology, because it is such a seamless experience, such a new experience for the user, just in terms of the web, it keeps the brand fresh, it keeps the brand young, yet for all its newness, it isn't starting from scratch. Which makes it instantly engaging and instantly intuitive. In fact, this is a fact, because I've got metrics and I'll share them in a minute. Oh, thank you, I'm gonna be so over. Interactive ideas that work hard to be part of their brand worlds have a better chance of working harder 
for their brands. Welcome to Monkey Mail. You've got a job to quit. I've got a nap to take. So let's get started. This is one of the most successful viral marketing apps yet. And as the speaker before me said, viral was an outcome, not a strategy. She's right. Anyway, it's had more than 75 million sessions. 75 million sessions, not hits, and billions of hits, which is not too bad for a monkey. And not too bad for an app that really, technically speaking, is not bleeding edge. Foster's Beer had pushed a text-to-speech bit out there before we did. Bubblicious was doing text-to-speech at the same time we were doing it. Goodby did something with text-to-speech and puppets. I don't know what it was, but none of them caught on. What made the difference for Monkey Mail was this. Excuse me, sir. More than all right. Analysis already. Hey, Rudy, uh, this doesn't make any sense. That didn't ring. You're, you're not talking to anybody. I apologize. I'll, I'll correct it myself. It's, it's just that I work with a bunch of monkeys here. Visit the largest job website, careerbuilder.com. A better job awaits. That's, that, that's, sir, that's, that's less than I make now. Want a new job? We've got the most. Careerbuilder.com. A better job awaits. Monkey Mail worked because it connected to something bigger than what it was. Monkey Mail worked because it connected to a bigger emotional connection because it connected to the world. And so my point kind of roundabout, but my point is that we need to be thinking in brand worlds, not apps, not pieces, not bits. And thinking in worlds, even though it's harder, even though it puts guardrails on your freedom of thought, it makes your technology and your interactive ideas better. Sometimes it can even make the world better, at least certain aspects of it. The Ogilvy team, led here in Chicago by my, my good friend Maureen Sheriff, and worked on internationally has done something truly amazing with a semi-dead brand called Dove. It was old, stodgy, fading away, but the agency team grabbed hold of the disconnect between the fashion industry's view of beauty and the women who have to live up to it. And the rest is, as they say, cellulite history. What if we loved our skin? And put nourishment in We might even show off our toes Take off our clothes, let the world in If we let nourishment in Or how do we love our skin? Introducing Dove Nourishing Lotions with 24-Hour Nutri-Serum The first line of body lotions by Dove so when this campaign, this big world idea went online, it bent not just to the dynamics of video sharing, but it stayed true to the brand world. And this video that I'm sure you've seen called Evolution is one of the internet's most passed along videos.
You want to know how powerful and successful that was? This proves it. This is user generated, not dove generated. God bless the internet. So, if you have any doubt, <coughs> I'm sorry, I cannot compete with that. If you have any doubt that these very important old rules uh, still work, um, don't take it from me, take it, take it from this guy. When the, when the Simpsons began on the Tracy Allman show, Homer was lucid and Bart's head was really weird. And the characters have gone through incredible changes uh, over time. Their context always sort of shifting with what's going on in society. The show has had a revolving door of staff writers and guest writers. It went from the little screen to the big screen, but following the old truths of great branding, which are really the even older truths of great storytelling and character development. It never roamed from its crazy upside down world of Springfield, even when it went online. So if you're in the branding business and you're working on a blog or a Facebook page or a rich media campaign or a widget or a microsite or something else we don't know about yet, and you're tempted by some bright, shiny object of an app, but it only connects to the brand essence, to the bigger world, if you close one eye and squint the other. I ask you to stop and think about these old truths. Stick with something long enough to make it stick. Stick with it at every point of consumer contact. So please, let's embrace the technological opportunities. They're going to keep coming our way. Push them in new directions. Push them hard but push them in a place that supports your brand's world. And if you're working on a brand that doesn't have a world, use these new tools, use these new technologies to create one. It is hard work for sure, but it is doable. In fact, even a monkey can do it. Thank you. <laughs>